Welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm Judy Singer. I'm the Senior Vice Provost for Faculty Development and Diversity, and I want to welcome you to this year's new Faculty Institute. Um, I can honestly say that this is a total pleasure to see all these new faces around the room and to have a new crop of faculty uh, to invigorate the Harvard campus and to uh, stimulate dialogue both among yourselves. Uh, one of the things we've learned is that new faculty like to meet new faculty, but also among your colleagues who have been here for quite some time. Um, I have been at Harvard University as a faculty member since 1984. This is my 30th anniversary. And as I was walking in this morning, I was thinking about what Harvard did for me in 1984. I, um, <clears throat> I got a benefits packet. I was told to go to Holyoke Center, renamed the Smith Campus Center more recently, to sign up for health benefits and told start teaching on Monday. Uh, this is a very, very different kind of Harvard, and I'm very pleased to be a part of it. Um, I've stayed at Harvard because it is a great place to be a faculty member. Uh, you will have fabulous colleagues. Uh, the Harvard faculty is the envy of Harvard higher education. You're going to get a chance today to meet people from across the university and really begin to feel part of not just your school and not just your department, but part of Harvard University. If you've started teaching, you know you have fabulous students. They will challenge you in ways that you can't imagine. You will go home at night and say, maybe she was right and I was wrong. A little bit, little bit daunting. And Harvard also just opens doors and it gives you opportunities both within the university and outside the university to pursue your scholarship, to pursue your intellectual agenda, and to train the next generation of scholars and leaders. Um, I'm going to come back and make some additional opening remarks, but President Faust is here, so I'm going to take advantage of having her here uh, and allow her to make some opening remarks, welcome you to Harvard, and she'll also have a brief period of time uh, to take some questions. From you. So uh, let me just introduce Drew. She needs no introduction. She is the 28th president of Harvard. She is a historian. She is a fabulous scholar, a fabulous human being, and a wonderful administrator. And I have to say, in the middle of the capital campaign, she is going to transform the Harvard of the future for generations to come. And we're just very pleased to have Drew as our president. So let me welcome Drew. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. Could you please give me all my introductions? That was, that was really nice. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. It's wonderful to see you here. I hope your first days at Harvard have been exhilarating and not too bewildering. This is a large place, and when I greet the freshmen, I often tell them they ought to have a compass and a whistle in order to find their way around. So I hope you have not found that um, you are lost in the midst of all that is Harvard. I just want to say a very few words and then take your questions and hear about what's on your mind. And Judy is right that this kind of gathering is something that she did not experience and I did not experience many, many years ago when I started teaching at the University of Pennsylvania, even before Judy was teaching here. There are two realms in which your work at Harvard is especially focused, your teaching and your research. I think both have been transformed in the kinds of supports that are available to you as you move into your careers. There was yesterday a large conference called HILT. It's a, an entity established just, I think, three years ago now, the Harvard uh, in, in, Initiative on Learning and Teaching. And it's meant to help support faculty in meeting the aspirations we all have for transforming teaching. Transforming teaching in face of how we know so much more about how people learn. Transforming teaching in face of the opportunities in the digital realm. And so offering faculty a chance to experiment, to come together, to talk about what they're doing. So that is one indication of the kinds of different opportunities are available and the kinds of resources that you can turn to as you uh, move through your teaching careers. When I began teaching, which was at the University of Pennsylvania, they cared that I had a dissertation and they gave me a piece of chalk and they just said, go do it. And there was a notion that you were either born to be a great teacher or not, and that nothing could be done about it. And the truth is so far different from those set of assumptions. And 
in addition to providing support for exploration of new ways of approaching teaching, we also have a lot of ways of supporting beginning teachers or teachers who want to strengthen their various aspects of their work. And so please take advantage of all of those and recognize that you evolve as a good teacher, you're not born as a good teacher. And that there are many different dimensions to teaching. It's not just performance. It's advising. It's supporting students working on dissertations. It's um, marshalling a whole range of skills that unfold learning for your students and simultaneously enhance learning for instructors and faculty members as well. So that's one thought I just want to put in your minds. The second thought relates to your role as scholars and researchers. You have landed at Harvard, and one of the attributes of being here is that you will be, I am certain, in a department that's very strong and has many scholars, or school, that has uh, many scholars whose work you admire and who you know you can learn from. But don't forget to look beyond your department or your school because there's so many people across this university with interests that are likely to intersect with your own. And so be sure to see beyond the immediate walls of your office and your location and try to find venues, and there are millions of these seminars and activities and lectures that can introduce you to broader aspects of your field. I think this is one of the greatest advantages of being here. So don't fail to yourselves embrace those possibilities because it will broaden your work and enhance your work. I can see how this has happened in my own life here. I came to Harvard as the Dean of the Radcliffe Institute in 2001 after 25 years on the faculty at Penn. And being at the Radcliffe Institute, which is an interdisciplinary research center, I found scholars asking questions that I had never thought of that had direct relevance to my work and that had have really made an impact on how I have approached my work ever since. So I urge you to take advantage of those opportunities as well. Let me now just see what's on your minds and try to respond as best I can to whatever questions you might wish to pose. I just want to add a few more remark, contextual remarks to some of Drew's comments. Um, one, one of the things that you will realize, in fact, this, this the number of people in this room is so large that we're not going to be able to go around the room and, and do introductions. We will pass around uh, by email electronically a list of people who are here, and hopefully at the break we can have some, uh, some conversations. Uh, but to just give you a sense of the scale of Harvard, there are 1,600 ladder faculty across the university, and that doesn't count the roughly eight to 12,000 faculty at our hospitals. So it is a, just a very, very large campus. One of the things that we're particularly pleased about is that it is increasingly a diverse campus. Uh, and uh, it, it is a campus that is both changing in terms of diversity and also trying to change in terms of community. So diversity is both about the demographics and other characteristics, but it's also about the inclusiveness of this community and having people feel a member. One of the things that is quite different, as Drew mentioned and I mentioned, is it used to be we did not invest in our faculty. And so uh, an event like this, a lot of the other, you'll start to get emails from me uh, on a monthly basis, put me in your safe sender. Uh, uh, boat so that we can actually communicate with you. Uh, the, this class of entering faculty, and we actually think of you as a class of entering faculty, is actually the most diverse in Harvard history. Uh, nearly 50% are women, uh, over 20% are uh, minorities, nearly 30% actually. But one of the challenges for Harvard is that it is historically decentralized. And when Drew talked about the vision of one Harvard, it is about trying to bake break down these boundaries and having people on the faculty and in the community at large feel like they are part of the community. And so that's part of what we're trying to do today. We're going to have a 
pair of panels. Uh, the first one is going to be uh, recently promoted associate professors, and the second one is going to be uh, some of our tenured faculty. And the goal of these two panels uh, is for people from across the university, and you'll notice that our speakers are from a variety of schools all across the university. Things differ across the schools. We'll be the first people to say that. there are, And you'll start to get that sense both in what you'll hear today from our panelists, but also in some of the questions that you'll be asked. Some schools have well-established mentoring programs, for example. Other schools are still uh, developing those kinds of things to, to uh, Rosetta's question. So, but we're trying to make a difference. We're trying to change the university, and we're very open to your ideas. So I hope you see today as an opportunity uh, to begin the conversation, not to end the conversation. And my email and my door is always open, and I'm happy to talk to all members of the faculty. It's actually the best part of my job. Uh, they pay me to do this. It's pretty amazing. Um, some of the questions that we've asked people to address today are in giving fa advice to new faculty, especially junior faculty, but not just junior faculty, we actually have a number of senior faculty here as well, is what do you think are the essential factors to one's development here as a faculty member, as a scholar, and as a teacher? What kinds of things really make a difference? I think Tay's question of what not to do is actually a, a good one. What to say no to is actually a, a, a one that I would add in there. What kinds of resources across the university uh, are available to you? This is a resource -rich university in terms of human capital. Uh, there are people in every field under the sun. If you have an idea that you want to bounce against somebody who's from a different field, this is a place where we are happy to try to make connections. We have an online tool called Harvard Faculty Finder that you just type in a keyword and you can find uh, a faculty member who has uh, been doing work in a particular area. And most Harvard faculty actually are quite willing to respond to requests from other Harvard faculty. Uh, I think you'll, you'll find that that's quite open. And also, how do you develop relationships with people? How do you establish new collaborations? How do you become both a citizen of your department and your school, but also a citizen of the university and be part of the intellectual fabric of, of the university. So these are just some of the topics that we're going to be uh, talking about today. Both of the panels are going to be introduced by my, my colleague, Elizabeth Ankarana, who is the Assistant Provost for Faculty Development and Diversity. And I'm going to introduce her now and, and sit down and have a cup of tea. Thank you. That we're still waiting for one of our panelists. So why don't we take advantage of having some time here and do some introductions around the room. Very brief, please. And as we do the introductions, say your name, your school, your department, if you have a department, not all schools do, and just go around the room and then make notes of some people that you want to catch up with. Uh, you're on a panel, so I'm going to set you aside. Deirdre, can you just start? Uh, 